What's up, guys? I'm Newbie Dave, and welcome to the Weekend Update. Let's get started. Boy, oh boy, there is some big news today. There was a big new update to Minecraft this week, Minecraft 1.17.30, and it was kind of a big one for just being a uh, like a patch release. It introduced a lot of new features, it fixed a lot of bugs. I encourage you to go look at the release notes for that update because there is a lot of stuff in there. Some of it's good and some of it is not so good. One of the really nice things is that campfires and soul campfires now stack. So if I were to come over here and make two campfires, check that out. They now stack in your inventory. This is really good news, especially if you like to use campfires for decoration, like as a, uh, you know, roofs or uh, flooring or something when you extinguish a campfire. It has a really nice texture to it. I think I did that for my uh, pergola. Yeah, I did campfires around the outside like that. So it's really, really good news if you like to use campfires for that. They now stack and you don't have to fill up your inventory with a bunch of campfires. So that's one of the good updates. One of the not so good updates is they did away with the uh, the dripstone dripping into a cauldron that had a potion in it, it will no longer refill the cauldron with more of that potion. That's really unfortunate because I was planning on making an infinite potion farm here soon with a bunch of cauldrons with different potions in them with dripstone above them. And it's great because you can use uh, glass bottles to remove the potion and as long as you leave a little bit in the bottom, the dripstone would refill it. Well, Mojang decided that was too OP, so they got rid of it. Another change that happened is in the change log, they said that they were changing how iron golems spawn to be more consistent with Java edition. And that's really all they said. Uh, looking around, it sounds like what that translates to is just the box that the game checks uh, for possible spawn locations has been uh, increased. So it used to be 16 by, I think, 16 by 6 by 16 on bedrock and it was 16 by 13 by 16 I believe on Java edition so they just made both boxes the same it's now 16 by 13 by 16 on both editions uh, and that's really as I understand it all that they changed however as you will see uh, this iron farm build no longer works. The The iron golems are not getting pushed into the kill chamber. They're stopping at the very edge. They die on top and either the iron will just stay on top or it gets burned up in the lava. So we need to fix this. Before we move on, we need to fix this. And the fix is actually really, really simple. I'm going to scoop up this lava. We're going to fall down into the kill chamber. We'll break all these signs. And we're really just going to lower the whole thing by a little bit. So I need to put, uh, I need to get out of here first. <laughs> so we just need to put these signs down a little bit lower. To do that, I'm going to put some top slabs. Uh, this is really hard to do when you have iron golems inside of this thing. I'm going to put some top slabs on the back here. And then coming back inside, we can put the signs against those top slabs. And so now, wow, get out of the way, you iron golem. Yeah, I think we need to get rid of these guys and prevent more golems from dropping in there first. Okay, back up on top here. I'm just going to build a little border around this thing so that new iron golems can't get pushed in. And then we're going to manually dispose of these guys. Whoa, boy. Okay, don't let that happen. I did not think about new iron golems spawning while I was doing this. Okay, things you should do before you start. <laughs> Block that off so iron golems won't fall down here while you're working. Okay, then I put some top slabs along the back. Now we can place not signs there. I don't know why, I just bounced up. Signs here. And we'll just build these signs going all the way across like this. And then, oh so important, be sure you replace these blocks that you broke to get in there before you replace the lava. So now, going back up top, hopefully for the last time, we can just place some lava anywhere on top of those signs, make sure it disperses correctly. And now we can get rid of this dirt that we placed down. And this thing should be working once again. The reason I had originally placed the lava so high up was so that it would only be touching the iron golem's heads. I was worried that if it was too much lower than that, that the uh, when they died, the iron and the poppies would get burned up by the lava and not drop into the hoppers. 
but after testing it with it a little bit lower like this, uh, they still get dropped and we can test this by just moving everything down a little bit in the chest. And then when this iron golem dies, we should see some more iron and poppies drop into the chest here. There you go. So this thing will still work with the uh, lava a little bit lower and that prevents the lava from pushing the iron golems back onto the beds and not falling down. So this thing is should be working from now on. Now what we did last time was we built this automatic sheep farm or wool farm uh, that will automatically shear sheep of each color. The wool will get collected and it is stored underground below the sheep. This thing has been running for quite a while and I started to get different color wool from all the sheep. This was a mistake from when I was fixing the, the top side. Uh, some of the magenta wool just popped off and got picked up next to it, but I have since fixed all that by replacing the fences with glass. And so all of these sheep will get sheared, their wool will get collected underground, and this thing is going to provide tons and tons of wool that we can use for builds or marking stuff off, or just making lots of beds. However, I was really, really disappointed that I had to use glass for all this because my original intent was to just surround the sheep with fences. I think it looks a lot better. Uh, not sure why that guy is not sheared. I'm guessing the grass grew back and he just hasn't eaten it yet. Anyways, I wanted to use fences. I think it looks a lot better, but it turns out when the sheep got sheared, the wool would almost never land on the block that the sheep were standing on, meaning that it wasn't getting picked up by the hopper minecarts underneath them and it was just staying on the ground. However, I don't like the glass. I don't like the way it looks. I played around with a couple different alternatives and what I found out was really just the top block here needs to be a solid block. What's underneath it doesn't really matter because when the wool gets sheared, it pops off and it will hit the edges of the solid blocks around the top and then just fall straight down. So we can actually get away with fences below this and it will still work just fine. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace all the glass on the bottom with fences again because I think it looks so much better. And this thing should still function just fine. And I can do, it's really nice that the sheep can't escape as long as we keep the glass on top there. So I can just go do all this without having to try to be quick about it to keep the sheep in. All right, so that's good. That's better. We don't have glass all the way around, but we do still have a bunch of glass on the top which still doesn't quite look as good as I would like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the glass on the backs here with some oak. And this time I do have to be kind of quick because uh, the sheep can get out above the dispenser if I leave that open for too long. And I'm going to replace the whole back wall with oak, including uh, between each of the sheep. There we go. I think I like that a lot better. I was originally going to do some uh, oak or some other solid blocks in between either, each of the sheep, but I think I'll just leave the glass because the way that glass works is connected glass, it just makes all the glass behind it transparent. And so this kind of leaves it feeling open, but you still get the definition of the individual stalls in between each of the sheep. So I like this. I, I think this is a lot better than just having them completely surrounded by glass and it still functions the way it's supposed to by keeping all of the wool inside of the one block that the sheep are standing on so that it gets collected properly. And with that, we can finally start on today's episode, the thing that I actually wanted to do today, which is making a cow farm. So we've got our wool farm, and now we're going to add a cow farm, which I guess if we were calling this a wool farm instead of a sheep farm, then we should call this new one a beef and leather farm. I'm just gonna call it a cow farm. Everybody calls it a cow farm. Nobody calls it a beef farm. It's confusing. So this is gonna be a cow farm. Now this is going to be a slightly, slightly modified version of Silent Whisper's cow farm. It's a great design what he did. Uh, the main thing I'm changing about this is I'm not going to have the dispensers that dispense lava because I would rather just use my looting three sword to kill the cows and get more leather, more beef rather than letting the lava do it. Uh, and just cook the beef. I mean, you can throw uh, the fire enchantment onto your sword if you want to have the beef come out cooked, but I would rather get more beef and leather from this uh, using my sword than having the lava do it. So that's the main modification that I'm making to this. So I'm going to build this thing right here in the gap between the sheep, and I'm gonna start by just digging out uh, a hole right here. So this is where the cow are going to come down. And so I'm going to dig out these four blocks right here, 
Um, I'll actually dig out the stone underneath that as well and just replace it with these blocks that I just removed because the chest and hoppers that we were going to put in here aren't completely solid and I don't want to see stone below that. So we're going to put a double chest in the ground with some hoppers on, uh, going into the chest. And then this is completely optional. I'm going to put some carpet on top of the hoppers. That's just to keep the cows, the baby cows, from sinking down into the hopper. It doesn't matter if they do. They're not going to get stuck. It doesn't break anything. It just keeps it all uh, at the same elevation. Now behind this, I'm going to do some more jungle logs. And I'm actually going to replace the grass above that with jungle logs as well, just so it all looks the same. And on that very top row of jungle logs, I'm going to put some buttons. You can use whatever buttons you want. These aren't actually going to be used as buttons. They're really just there to stop water. Now above the chest, we're going to put some upside down stairs. This allows us to still open the chest while preventing the cows that will be inside of this from getting out. And then above those stairs, we want to put some top slabs like this. And this will give us a little opening where we can kill the cows. That is going to wrap things up for this bottom section. So we will go back up and work on the top. So back up top, we're going to put two more solid blocks of your choice right above the slabs that we put down there. So you should now have a one by two opening. This is where all the baby cows are going to fall. And now we want to surround this with glass and we need there to be glass on all sides. So we actually need to replace some of these fences that we just put down with, with the glass that used to be there. But that's okay because this is part of the farm and so it serves a purpose in this case. Now in the corners I'm actually going to put some of the deep slate brick rather than glass and I'm going to do that on all the sides. These deep slate bricks are going to be the, the solid building blocks of this cow farm and so I want them to be on all the corners. Now on the inside, on this next level, we don't want solid blocks because we're going to be putting some iron bars in the middle. And if you have solid blocks, the iron bars are going to connect to the sides and we don't want that. We just want the iron bars connecting to each other in the middle. And so what we need to do is in Silent Whisperer's design, he just put some, uh, some slabs on the bottom going around. That's not going to work because we've got the sheep on either side. And if you have the slabs, it's rare, but it can happen. The wool, when it gets sheared, could actually land on the slab and not get pushed back into the center block. So instead of uh, slabs, I'm just going to use stairs that are facing inside like this because it serves the same purpose. The iron bars aren't going to connect to the stairs. There we go. And the purpose for this is the cows are actually going to stand on these iron bars uh, and the baby cows can fall through, but the adult cows cannot. So that's why we need the iron bars there and that's why we want them not connecting to anything. Now, I probably should have done this before I put the iron bars in, but underneath that, back in the corner, just go ahead and put down a bucket of water. The water should all flow to the front and the buttons underneath that is stopping it from flowing down uh, into where the cows are going to go. So the next row up is going to be another row of glass. Uh, this is kind of optional. You can use whatever solid block you want for this. I think the glass looks really nice because it lets you see into the farm. And we're going to leave one block open that doesn't have glass. And in that block, we're going to put a dispenser that is facing inside like this. Inside the dispenser is going to go a water bucket. And then finally, we're going to surround the entire top of this with one more round of solid blocks of your choice. And then finally, on top of the solid block that is above the dispenser, we're going to place a button. So when you press this button, the dispenser will dispense water. And then when you press it again, the, it will collect the water. And this is going to help us to breed the cows. So all of the cows are going to go on the top inside here. When we want to breed them, we'll hit this button, we'll feed them. And then when we're done, we'll hit the button to uh, scoop up the water again. There's one more thing to do with this farm before we can call it complete. But before we do that, we need to actually move some cows into this farm. The more cows you get in here, the better, uh, up to a point. It's, it's kind of hard to feed too many cows in a small space. The water helps with that, but if you get like 40 or 50 cows in here, it's just going to be, <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare trying to feed all of them. And so I've got a couple of cows already over here and this looks like it's probably, I don't know, 10, 10 or 12 cows. That's perfect for me. You can put more in there, 
but it's going to be really tough getting them all in there in survival and it's also going to be very difficult to uh, to breed them all when they're in there so I'll take a few at a time and kind of work my way over there with them I'm afraid that if I try to get all 12 of them over there at once it's going to be an absolute madhouse so just lure them over with wheat, build a little staircase out of some temporary blocks. I'm gonna make it two blocks wide to just kind of help them get up and then lead them up here. Be very careful that you don't fall in and just kind of uh, get behind them and nudge them into this little opening like that. And so I will do this two or three cows at a time until I get all the cows in there. Now it should be pointed out, you do not want any baby cows up top. You only want adult cows. So don't breed these cows while you're doing it. Don't lead any baby cows up there. The whole point of this farm is that the adult cows stay up top and the baby falls, uh, the baby cows fall down to the bottom. So if you put any baby cows up top, guess where they're going to end up. And there we go. So I had 11 cows in my corral over there. I didn't want an odd number of cows because you're going to be left over with one that doesn't breed with any other cows. So I did go ahead and breed two of the cows and then I just fed the baby cow 10 wheat which made him grow up into an adult right away. So if you're short on cows or you need a couple of extra ones, you can breed them and then just feed the babies really fast to turn them into adults. Now to finish this off, I'm going to put down a temporary block and then four more iron bars. And the purpose of this is to keep myself from falling in there. When I'm feeding them, I don't want to fall in because to get if I do, to get out, I'm going to have to break the side and the cows are going to get out and it's going to be an absolute nightmare. And that actually completes construction. We'll need something to get up here. I've got just a little temporary staircase of dirt. Um, for the time being, I'll probably just put a ladder along the side, but I'm eventually going to build a structure around this whole thing. And so I'll have a different way to get up here when I do that. So let me show you how to use this. I've got 12 cows in there. We'll push the button. They start bouncing up and down. And so they're not all at the same level now. And you just go around and start feeding all of them. And just keep clicking since they're bouncing up and down. The ones that you've already fed will eventually bounce below the ones you haven't and you'll eventually be able to feed all of them. And once you finish feeding all the cows, hit the button again to turn the water off. And then you will come underground and all of the baby cows will fall down here. You're just going to have to give it time. After about 10 or 15 minutes, they will grow into adults and then you dispense of the adults and all of the leather and beef will go into the bottom chest. If you enchant your sword with flame or fire aspect, whatever it's called, then you'll get cooked beef. Otherwise, you'll just get a lot of beef that you'll have to cook up. I don't mind cooking it. I've got a super smoker over my XP farm. We are gonna get tons and tons of leather and beef from this farm. And that's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I am really excited to get this cow crusher in here. I guess it's not a cow crusher because you're not crushing cows like you are on Java Edition, but this cow farm that is very, very easy to use and we'll get tons and tons of leather and beef from it, which will help us in a lot of future builds and give us all the food that we need. I am really looking forward to the next episode where I'm finally going to build a barn around this so it's not just a bunch of sheep pens and cows sitting out in an open field. So come back on Tuesday to check out that episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button. And while you're down there, feel free to subscribe so you'll get notified of future episodes as they come out. Thanks y'all and have a great day.